Hi, this is Heather with PassionForSavings.com. Today we're going to cover stockpiling, and I know that the term stockpiling tends to kind of give you these images in your head of people with rows and rows and rows of green beans and rows and rows and rows of mashed potatoes and things that you would never eat. And so I want you to kind of take a second, erase those pictures from your head because stockpiling is all about using buying ahead principles, rock bottom prices, and saving money. So here's how we're going to do this. The first thing that I always tell people when they want to create a stockpile is one, be realistic. Two, start small. And three, only buy things that you know your family is going to use or that you need. Um, what I like to do is to encourage people to create a list of their top 10 items that they want to stockpile. Um, I typically would do this for like health and beauty items and then also for food items. I also like to say if you're going to start somewhere, start with health and beauty items because if you have a drugstore like Rite Aid or CVS or Walgreens in your area, you can get health and beauty items for cheap or free or even better than free most weeks. So it's really a great place to start because you can kind of start to see freedom in your budget really fast when you know you can get deodorant for free or body wash for free and you've been paying three or four dollars a piece for them. So I really like to say start with drugstore items but also obviously food and our food budget is what we're all concerned about. Um, so what I like to have you do is pick one or two items in the beginning that you're going to stockpile each week. So these are going to be items that are at their rock bottom prices. A rock bottom price is going to be, you know, sale prices are constantly going like this. When it hits its bottom price and you have a high value coupon for that product, that's when we're going to find our rock bottom price. So we're going to look for low prices and then bring that price even lower by using coupons or store promotions. So when you find an item at a rock bottom price, what do you do? You want to buy eight to 10 weeks worth of that item because that's what a traditional sales cycle, most every item in the store, most items that you gonna, are gonna buy are gonna go on sale about every eight to 10 weeks. So that's about two to three months worth of items. So you really don't ever need to buy more than that. Um, what I like to say is to set aside a part of your budget each week for stockpiling, specifically for buying multiples of an item. So if you're running a very tight budget already, you have to gradually build in that stockpiling budget. So you can't do it all at once. You can't just walk into the store. If you already don't have enough money to just pay for your groceries, it's a process. So you have to start small, but know that as you stockpile things, you're going to have more money. You're not going to be buying those items on a weekly basis. So that gives you more money in your budget to stockpile something else. Here's the idea. I say try to start with maybe even just $10 a week. See if there are items you can cut off your shopping list that you can sacrifice this week and say, okay, I'm not going to buy Diet Coke. I'm not going to buy Velveeta cheese. I'm not going to buy any chips. Or something, you know, some of those things can add up to $10 really fast. So take a few things out of your shopping list this week that you normally buy and, um, Take that $10 and see what you can buy for it. So let's say cheese is normally $2 a bag or $2.50 a bag for an 8-ounce bag of cheese. If I find it on sale with coupons for $1 a bag or less, let's say I know my family uses one bag of cheese a week, about. I mean, you want to stockpile items that you use and that you buy frequently. Because if I stockpile items that... I'm not buying on a frequent basis, then I'm not going to see savings in my weekly grocery bill. So if I'm stockpiling items that I'm buying frequently, all of a sudden I buy 10 of that, well for the next nine weeks, I don't have to buy that item with my grocery money. So that's where I start to see my grocery budget reducing. And that's where I start to get the freedom to stockpile a little more. So I'm going to take my $10. I've cut out a few things out of my grocery budget. I really could use these things, but I can live without them, okay? So I cut them out of my grocery budget. I have $10 to stockpile. 
Well, I can find cheese. I know, I buy a bag of cheese every week when I'm at Walmart. I throw that in my cart. So I'm gonna stockpile 10 bags of cheese, okay? It's on sale, I have a coupon, I have multiple coupons, so I'm gonna get 10 bags for a dollar or less. I'm using that $10 that I, that I have left over by cutting a few things out of my list. So now that $10, I buy 10 bags of cheese. Well, the next time that I go to the store, I don't have to buy cheese. So that's two, 250 off of my grocery bill. Now I don't have to cut $10 out, I only have to cut eight. Let's say I cut $8 out, plus I have the $2 that I'm not spending on cheese this week, so now I have another $10 to maybe stockpile cereal. Let's say cereal's normally $3 a box. I can get it for a dollar a box this week after a store promotion and after my coupons. So now I can get 10 boxes of cereal for a dollar each. That's gonna last me that eight to 10 weeks that I need to get through to the next sales cycle till I can find cereal on sale again. And what it does is it gives me one more item that I don't have to buy for the next few weeks, which gives me more money to use towards my stockpile. So you can see how gradually buying a few items, as long as they're items that you know your family uses and that you buy on a frequent basis, it will start to give you that wiggle room that you need so that you feel like you can breathe again. And then what happens, you're using up that stockpile constantly. So you shouldn't have closets and closets full of stuff and garages full of canned goods and things like that. I mean, I just have our one small pantry, our freezer and our fridge. I do have a deep freeze because I find that I can store a lot of things that way. But other than that, we pretty much have your normal space and because I'm constantly using the products that I'm buying and I'm only buying products that I use, I never really run out of storage space because I'm constantly taking stuff out as I'm putting stuff in. Does that make sense? So that's kind of the principle behind stockpiling. Um, remember, I don't think I can say it enough, buy the products that you use, buy them at their rock bottom prices, eight to 10 weeks worth of stuff, and um, be consistent and start small, and before you know it, you will have a stockpile of things for your family to pull from, a stockpile to plan your menus off of, and you will be saving money on a weekly basis because you are buying everything at its lowest price rather than buying even a few things on sale and a few things at full price. So that's our goal, never pay retail, and hopefully that kind of gives you an understanding of how to begin the process of stockpiling.